a daughter's suicide. You believe her boyfriend knew she was going to kill herself. You didn't go to the funeral? No, I had a licensure exam that day. New Dr. Phil. Today at 3 on CBS 13. How Hurricane Irma's rain will affect people in Maine. CBS 13 at 5. After your car accident, stop, think, don't say anything, and don't sign anything until you call us first. After my car accident, the insurance company wanted me to take less than what I deserved. I said, stop, no way. I'm not signing anything until I call Lowry and Associates. Stop, think, and call us now. Lowry and Associates won for me $125,000. I'm Jim with Lowry and Associates. Call us. We win for you. Call 222-2222. We win for you. Please, a 1% difference makes all the difference. That's why U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. Sadly, they're using a good enough network. Hello? Hello? <sighs> Left or right? What's one wrong turn? Oops. Bye-bye. A 1% difference makes all the difference. So get our stronger signal with unlimited data and no hidden fees for $40 a month in the middle of anywhere. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a daughter's suicide. You believe her boyfriend knew she was going to kill herself. And two parents. I love Samantha more than anyone I have ever met. You didn't go to the funeral? No, I had a licensure exam that day. Struggling with grief. Why can we not have our daughter's clothes? I told you that they were outside. You could come get them. What did her boyfriend know? You were with a woman tonight. Samantha died. Did you go home with that girl? Uh, I did. Did you wake up and make out with that girl? I, I don't think it's necessary for me to get into the intimate details. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Jonathan were college sweethearts, and Samantha majored in business, and Jonathan had just entered his second year at a prestigious law school. But according to Samantha's father, Dan, and her stepmother, Katie, life on campus for these co-ed lovers was far from perfect. They say they began to notice major red flags with Jonathan. They claim just weeks into the relationship, he began isolating Samantha from her family and friends, installing GPS on her phone and monitoring her every conversation. But they say before they could convince their daughter to leave Jonathan, the unthinkable happened. Two days before Halloween, a police officer and a priest knocked on their door, delivering the most horrifying news. Daughter Samantha was dead. She had been found hanging lifeless from inside her carport at the house she shared with her boyfriend, Jonathan. Police say her cold and lifeless body had hung for hours, shockingly mistaken as a lifelike Halloween decoration. Now, the police have ruled Samantha's death a suicide, but Katie and Dan insist that Jonathan is responsible for her death. Take a look. Without a doubt, Jonathan is responsible for Samantha's death. Jonathan is a narcissist and a sociopath. My daughter would still be alive if she had never met him. Before Jonathan, Samantha knew who she was and what she wanted. When Jonathan showed up, she became subservient and quiet. She started becoming more and more isolated. If I was having a conversation with Samantha, Jonathan literally took over. One time I stopped by the house when Jonathan came home, she completely shut down. She became a mannequin. She was crying out for help. She was in pain. That's my little girl. After Samantha died, 
Uh, we were able to get into her Facebook. Why aren't you answering? You better answer your phone right now. Absolutely horrified us. You're going to be in so much trouble. You better be prepared to get the out. He was trying to control her. Jonathan had all these rules. If she broke them, she paid some sort of penalty. She was supposed to have her GPS on at all times. Every 15 to 20 seconds, he would be messaging her, where are you? As a father, it made me extremely angry that somebody would treat my daughter like that. <sighs> On this particular one that we read ended with Jonathan saying, I'm going to kill you. It was seven days before she died. Now, these parents are so upset because Katie actually believes that Jonathan knew that Samantha was going to take her life that night. She believes he knew and has gone out of his way to cover up his behavior that led up to her death. There are a lot of things that don't add up when it comes to what happened with Samantha that night. Jonathan knew that Samantha had been threatening suicide. He never mentioned one single problem with Samantha whatsoever. Jonathan and Samantha had gone to a Halloween party that night, and a woman that Jonathan had been seeing was at the party. Samantha left very upset. They broke her. Samantha did not leave a suicide note. That does not make any sense to me. We recently found out that the night Samantha died, she sent Jonathan several texts, and Jonathan has deleted them. Why would he delete all of them? Is there something he does not want people to know? Was Samantha trying to tell Jonathan that night that she was going to kill herself? We found a notebook in her room that she had obviously been using, almost like a diary. There were several pages torn out. We find that pretty suspicious. He refused to identify Samantha's body. He refused to even look at her. Why are you refusing to identify the body? You're the one that's been with her for two years. Is it hard for you to look at her? Are you guilty? I would give anything to have one more minute with her. Just to look at her face one more time. One more time. Well, first, let, let me say to the two of you, I'm terribly sorry for your loss. Uh, you, you, one thing you won't hear me say today is I know how you feel. Because you, you can't know if you haven't been there. And um, how do you feel about this, Dad? The pain never stops. To know the Samantha before the relationship, and to see the Samantha she turned into during the course of the relationship is 180 degrees. Big change. Big change. Yes. And you say, but for her being involved with Jonathan, she would be alive today. If Samantha had never met Jonathan, she would be here. If Jonathan had not treated her the way he treated her, had not belittled her, had said something, she would still be here. She would still be here. You believe he actually knew she was going to kill herself that night? I believe that we're never going to know 100% what happened that night. We know that she was extremely upset that night. We know that she left a, a masquerade party. She attempted to reach him several times. Um, I believe that there were times that she actually did reach him. Why no suicide note? This is a, a, a very hard one for me because there was nothing in the day and her thoughts and all the conversations that she had with people that gave any indication she was despondent, depressed, or anything else. Whatever happened at the Monster Bash, whatever occurred in those last few hours, put her in this suicide mode. Okay, what is it you think he did that drove her to this, not just that night, but through the relationship. He's very highly controlling of the relationship, and the, he had to have control of her computers in terms of being able to have access, know all the passwords. Uh, he insisted that they put their money in joint accounts. Uh, he had to know her whereabouts all the time. 
So your theory is she felt so trapped there was no way out of this? I believe. Well, Jonathan is here. He insists he is not responsible for Samantha's choice to take her own life. He says he not only wants her parents to end their grief-filled vendetta against him, he also wants them to stop blaming themselves for their daughter's death. We'll hear what he has to say after the break. Katie and Dan have been determined to destroy my career and my life. Samantha was the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. I was never abusive towards Samantha, physically or emotionally. And later, the, the, the pain that I'm feeling right now, you wouldn't want to feel this. What if I went and did as well? How the pain that you feeling when she hung herself? Can we talk about Samantha for a minute? on an all-new Dr. Phil. I want to be a YouTube star. She calls Dad an idiot. She dropped out of school. You bought her a new car. And Mom a psycho. Last night you wanted me to rub on your leg. Yeah, because I want you to do things for me. What will she say? You're going to try and find my weak spot. I don't have a weak spot. About Dr. Phil. How do you know what I'm going to do? I know every aspect on everything. I mean, it's television. It's not that hard. That's tomorrow. We found out about Samantha's death from her local police. To this day, Jonathan has never once offered any condolences to us. Jonathan did not send flowers. Jonathan did not even send a card. Jonathan did not show up at the funeral. Jonathan used her Facebook to block family members from seeing all of the condolences and blocking any commentary about him. How are you that callous? It was literally as if she died and she didn't exist. Well, it's a story that reads like it was ripped from the headlines. A beautiful college student takes her own life, and her parents blame her law student boyfriend. But Jonathan, that boyfriend, insists he is not responsible for Samantha's suicide and claims he did everything he could to help prevent this horrific tragedy. Katie and Dan suggested I was the direct cause of Samantha killing herself, that I was emotionally abusive to her, and that Samantha felt like she had to end her life. This was Samantha's choice. I can't take responsibility for something that she did. I was never abusive towards Samantha, uh, physically or emotionally. Katie and Dan have been going through this horrific grieving process. Their grief has manifested into a vendetta against me. They're determined to destroy my career or my life. This is not a healthy place for them. Samantha was the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. We both fell crazy in love. We stressed the importance of communication. We had a trusting relationship. We shared joint finances. We knew all the variations to each other's passwords. We were very open with each other, but I found out that Samantha had been having an affair. I had told Samantha that I thought breaking up was necessary. She was very emotionally charged and had talked about killing herself. I was so scared. I told her that I would try and work this out. After that, I was still very unhappy. I wanted to see other people. And I told her that I'm willing to continue to live together, and she was willing to exist in a, in a roommate situation. I tried to be the best friend that I could be. When she passed, it was the absolute worst day of my life. Well, Jonathan claims Samantha couldn't handle all the stress of her life. And Katie and Dan made her personal struggles even more difficult. Graduate school was particularly stressful for Samantha. Trying to find her way in a new city, the issues in our relationship overwhelmed her. She didn't feel like she was able to talk about any of the problems in her life with most of her friends and family. Her dad didn't seem interested in what she was doing with school and work. Samantha considered Katie her best friend. Samantha didn't think Katie was being the friend she really needed. Samantha was stuck 
in between a rock and a hard place. I don't know that if I had been in her situation, I wouldn't have been completely overwhelmed too. I want Dan and Katie to move on from blaming me for Samantha's decision, but also to be able to move on from any guilt that they might have. I just want them to reach a place of peace. Jonathan is going to join us now. Jonathan, please come on in. Jonathan, Dr. Phil, how you doing? So the last time you folks saw each other was in court, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. And why were you in court? Jonathan is refusing to give us Samantha's clothes her mementos, jewelry. That's not entirely accurate. I said, Dan, I will give you the, the code to my front door if you'll call me when you get there and go over the things that you want to remove from the home. They, they didn't call me when they got there. I came home, like two days later, I found um, my guest bedroom, all the drawers of my dressers are pulled out. They just kind of ransacked the place. That was Samantha's room, not his guest bedroom. You didn't go to the funeral? No, I had a licensure exam that day. So you didn't attend the funeral because you had something that was more important? I wouldn't say that. I didn't attend the funeral because I thought the healthiest way for, for me to grieve was to put all of my energy into my schooling and my work. And I didn't want to let this disrupt the progress I was making. I didn't want to have to reschedule the NPRE or reschedule my final exams. Um, and it was 500 miles away as well. Well, you said this was the best thing that ever happened to you in your life when you met her. And she's dead. And you don't feel moved to show up and pay your respects? Well, I, I don't to think her? there is. Um, any bones about this that they did not want me there. Did you offer your condolences to them? I spoke with Dan by phone a couple of times and I had apologized to him for this happening, expressed my condolences. I don't know that it got communicated to Katie, but I did have that discussion with Dan. Is there any reason anybody would have told me that you would have had another girl over to the house the very day her body was found? That did not happen. Just so you know, I, I'm not of the opinion that y you caused her death, and I think there are a lot of factors that, that weigh into it. Next, uh, Arcadia and Dan falsely accusing Jonathan of being abusive. That's different than causing her death towards their daughter, or is Jonathan lying to himself about how he really treated Samantha? These are factors, not necessarily causation. We'll talk about that when we come back. Did you know that previously she had purchased a rope? I found out three days before it happened. Before Dr. what Phil, happened? He told the detective something different. And later, is there anything that you would do differently? I have never gotten in a relationship to begin with. I'm a really good drunk driver. She was arrested in her car with no pants on. You seriously believe you're not an alcoholic? What about our wedding day? You need to learn how to close your mouth. You need to get yourself under control. Why are you dating a 14-year-old child? That's a fourth-degree felony. You're just a loser, Paul. You're a verbally abusive dictator. You're the failure of a parent. You're the failure of a parent. You have no job. You are living in the car. I have two vehicles. Does the other one have a windshield? <laughs> think you're talking to? I am your father. Your daughter, we know, is violent and physical. Shut the f up! And you want to get up in her face and say, what are you doing? I hate myself so much. There are times where I just want to die. But if I'm killing myself, I know my family would be so hurt. So that's why I just hurt myself. So they wouldn't have to pay for a funeral.
Katie and Dan have been trying to ruin my life. Katie and Dan wrote a very lengthy letter to the dean of my law school explaining that I was this terrible, awful person, that I shouldn't be a part of the legal profession, that I should be removed from school. The letter was uncalled for. It was an assault on me as a person at my core, my character, blaming me for Samantha's decision. Katie and Dan think pursuing a vendetta against me is what's going to give them the closure they need. Why, why do you think I say that I don't think he is responsible for her death? He didn't put the rope around her neck. He didn't push her. He wasn't there. He wasn't there at all for her. You hear them acknowledge that you didn't cause her death. You, you certainly didn't kill her. You didn't. Look, she made that choice. And what they're trying to get a, a handle on so they can move on is what she was living with and what she was dealing with ahead of time. They did provide some messages that went between you and Samantha uh, just a few days before the suicide. October 22nd, uh, 8.09 p.m., Jonathan writes, why aren't you answering, uh, unhappy face? 8.10, you are going to be in trouble. 8.10, send location now. 8.12, we are in a major fight in T minus nine. 8.13, you better answer the bleeping phone right now. It says eight now, but I think it means right now. 8.16, I'm going to bleeping kill you. 8.19, your location better be on. 819, I better be able to see where you were at. 823, you better be prepared to get the bleep out. 826, Samantha says, you went from zero to 100 in 20 minutes. 834, Jonathan, you broke the rules. 834, keep your phone on you. And I'm gonna own those. Those are those are bad communications. Um, <laughs> I, but but here's the situation is um, you won't find any communications or anything like this prior to August of 2016. What had happened was is I was, I was gone for several months. When I came back home to Samantha, I had discovered her having an affair on me for the entire time I was gone. When I discovered the affair, I had told her that I, I want to separate. We need to break up. And she had contemplated killing herself that night. Out of fear for her life, I told her we could try to work this out. Didn't you make an agreement that one night stands would be okay? I, I don't think we made any agreements about that at all. And I had told her that if she had a one night stand um, and I didn't find out, then there's no issue. Um, <laughs> key word is, is me not finding out. What but, you had said was, I'm going me. to have a um, one night stand. Excuse me. And you are going to but, have to have the same privilege. But what has happened what your words were, Jonathan. is that she had a four-month-long affair of the heart, which is very different. When she had this affair of the heart, did you say, okay, now I'm going to do that to balance the sheet? I may have. The, the pain that I'm feeling right now, you wouldn't want to feel this. What if I went and did it as well? <laughs> Try but, the pain she was feeling. Exactly. But didn't leading into when this she had summer... An affair on me? Try the pain she was feeling when she hung herself. Think about that. When you wouldn't return the calls, but you wouldn't else. do anything. I would the, like to, to respond to that, to which is... talk about his daughter who? for one second, Jonathan? Can we talk about Samantha for a minute? <laughs> we are not here for Jonathan. You understood that she was emotionally troubled. Why don't you say... You know, Dan, there might be something going on. You, you might Dan, did talk I, about Did this. I not get her into therapy? She was did in counseling. Did you say one word to therapy? a family or a friend? Uh, you tell us. You I tell have a story. Duty. One word. Wait, I have a duty word. to Samantha. You tell a story. You did about. not fulfill your duty to Samantha. My duty to anyone in this audience, if they are suicidal, my duty as a human being is to do something about it. Let me, and do not on. talk about it. Let me ask you. Therapy is the best possible thing you can do. There is nothing better than getting that person mental health treatment, and that's what I did. Did you know that previously she had purchased a rope? I, I found out three days before it happened. 
before Dr. what Bill, happened. Dr. Bill, he told the detectives something different. Well, let me tell you what I heard. I found out that two weeks before it happened, that she had threatened to kill herself and that she had done something. I didn't know what thing she had done was until three days before she passed. And mm -hmm. that's when she told me she bought a rope. She had told me about her contemplating suicide the two weeks prior. But the week before she passed, she's like, I need to go return this tomorrow. And I was like, that's, that's a good idea. There's someone who claims that Jonathan is leaving out key information about his relationship with Samantha. Information she believes pushed Samantha to end her own life. Uh, I want to talk about that information when we come back. You were with a woman the night she died, right? I was staying with a friend that night. I don't think it's necessary for me to get into the intimate details. Now, there's a woman named Jen that was Jonathan Samantha's next door neighbor. She considered Samantha a friend. She says there is an important detail that's being left out of this tragic tale. Take a look. Right over there is the carport where Samantha hung herself. I never really liked Jonathan. He was very controlling. He wouldn't let her have friends. He would like track her with GPS. Basically, Samantha wasn't allowed to do anything. Jonathan let me and Samantha be friends because I lived right across the street and he could pretty much keep tabs on her. Samantha told me that he wanted to have an open relationship. The agreement was that one night stands were okay, but anything more serious than that wasn't allowed. They were supposed to be getting engaged and if she didn't do what he wanted, he would leave. Samantha told me that Jonathan had been sleeping with other people when he was gone for the summer. Samantha was with one person twice. Jonathan called her hooking up with that guy, an affair of the heart, because it happened more than one time. Affairs of the heart broke the rule. And he said that he needed to have his own affair and that Samantha would just have to be okay with that or else he would leave. The night she died, there's like no question about it. They were still like very much in a relationship with one another, even though he was sleeping with other people. I told him that none of this would have ever happened if he hadn't taken that other girl home. His response was that if it hadn't been that night, it would have been any other night. Jen became our neighbor um, right about the time that Samantha had had that affair. They were never friends. They had only hung out a couple of times. But a lot of this discussion about um, allegations of me being controlling or otherwise, I think it's important to put this in a, a time context because all of these allegations are based on the time from when I had discovered her having the affair until the time she had passed. I insisted on separating multiple times um, and Samantha responded with threats of suicide. What choices are, am I supposed to make at that Tell point? Someone. Tell someone. Tell someone. Anybody, That's the choice anything. you are supposed to make. Yeah. Let me ask some. Let me ask some. Why were you feeling the need to track her phone, be telling her, you've got two minutes to do this, you need to get back to me, tell me where you are, you better this, that, and the other? What's, what's that about? That was wrong. That was yes, wrong. Yes, it was. Over the summer while I was out of town, I would be calling her and she wouldn't answer. No big deal. I was able to look at her phone log and see that all the times I had called, she had been with another guy. But you were with a woman the night she died, right? I, I was staying with a friend that night. And did you go home with that girl? Uh, at four in the morning. But you did go home with that girl? I did. I did, because me and Samantha were separate. You went home and slept with that girl that night? I did not sleep with her. That never happened. You went, you went home with her? I went home with her at 4 you in the morning. You slept at her house? I slept at her apartment. Did you wake up and make out with her that morning? I, I don't think it's necessary for me to get into the intimate details. Um, I, and I don't think it's necessary to bring Samantha's personal intimate life on national television. I think that Samantha would be appalled by the breach of privacy. At that time, Samantha wasn't sleeping with anybody. You never you cared heard. about what Samantha thought when she was alive. Next, Katie and Dan claim Jonathan is out to cash in on their daughter's death and is fighting them over their daughter's belongings. We're talking about a bicycle, a hammock, and a mixing bowl. We'll talk about that after the break.
Jonathan could care less about the loss of Samantha. We were on our way back to Tennessee with her ashes. The next thing we know, Jonathan is calling us on the phone, screaming at us. It was absolutely ridiculous. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. She dropped out of school. You bought her a new car. And wants to be a YouTube star. I know every aspect on everything. I mean, it's television. It's not that hard. That's tomorrow. Same day that Samantha had killed herself. I went over to their house. Jonathan started complaining to me about how Samantha had him over by killing herself because she knew that he couldn't afford to pay bills on his own. Your girlfriend just killed herself. You're complaining about how you can't afford your bills. I thought that it was insane. Well, Katie and Dan claim that since her daughter's death, Jonathan acts like he could care less about their loss and is more interested in making money off her death. Jonathan says that's wrong. He's just trying to protect what is rightfully his. Take a look. Jonathan is only out to make money. He could care less about the loss of Samantha. Jonathan allowed my husband and I to go into their house to get her things. It floored me to see all of her stuff just piled up and it looked like you were evicting somebody. When I came back home, it looked like someone had ransacked my home. They had taken a bunch of my belongings, a bicycle. They took a watch I had just bought her. Even stuff I owned before I met Samantha. They clearly took that out of spite. We were on our way back to Tennessee with her ashes. The next thing we know, Jonathan is calling us on the phone, screaming at us. What I wanted to do is take her home. <sighs> He actually called my husband, said to him that if my husband will give him $500, he will not call the police and we can forget about everything. It was absolutely ridiculous. I have a check for $4,508 payable to Samantha. Samantha's college tuition refund check had been mailed to him. Jonathan was going to hold this $4,500 check until we return Samantha's things. I don't want to play hardball. I just want my stuff back. Instead of showing that he was human, he went straight to he was going to sue me. We ended up having to go to probate court over this. Our daughter was 22. There was no estate. But he has shown Samantha zero respect. I do not believe for one second that Jonathan loved my daughter. How did we get into threatening court over things when we've got a lost loved one here? First off, I love Samantha more than anyone I have ever met in my life. And for you guys I to say I didn't love Samantha that you've ever is truthfully the, loved only yourself. the only person you love is I have never loved anyone more than her. You put yourself above everybody else. What do you want from Jonathan, if, if anything? Explain to me, in what world do you think that it's right to take somebody so beautiful and lock this possession up and not share it. And then when it cries out for help and pain and ignore it, tell me how a person can do that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how a help. person can do that because instead of ignoring it, I got her into therapy and got her mental health treatment. How about pick up the phone call the parents? The one, how about tell the person that's sitting in front of you having dinner well, I, so six I didn't, weeks before it happened? So I didn't come on here to, to attack you or to tarnish Samantha's reputation. I think that Samantha's a very private person, but I think it's important to know that how can I tell you about Samantha's well-being when part of her well-being is that she's feeling stressed out from her family, she's feeling stressed out from school. There's all these different dimensions and factors to the stress Samantha was having. Looking back, if you had this to do over again, what, if anything, would you do differently? Uh, define this. The situation of you being in a relationship with a young woman that took her own life. If you could go back to any time before that, 
Is there anything that, that you would do differently? If there's anything I wish I could have done differently, it would to have never gotten in a relationship to begin with. That would have solved all their issues. At no point would I have been in their life. At no point would they have had to be exposed to what is apparently such a, a, an awful human being. Um, they wouldn't be able to, to make all these basis allegations had I never done that. And we would have our daughter. Do they still have any of your things? They have the watch that I bought her, a mixer for cooking. They only took things that were worth money. We got her phone records and we saw in a very short period of time um, she called you time and time and time again um, with, with no response. I, I spoke uh, with her um, three different times. I don't know which one of those would be that. But I, she called me and she said very calmly, Jonathan, are you going to be home safe? I said, yes, Samantha, I'm going to be home safe. And she, she texted me the same question. She texted me saying, are you coming home? I said, well, yes, Samantha, I'm coming home. She called me again. Said, okay, Samantha. She's like, are, are you going to be home safe? I said, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be home. Why, do you, why are you asking me the same question? But then you didn't come home. Um, I, I was going to come home. Um, but, did, but then you it, didn't. it didn't work out like that. <laughs> do they still have any of your things? Yes, Dr. Phil. W what do they have? They have the watch that I bought her two months before she passed. Mm -hmm. They have a mixer for cooking that I had bought a week before she passed. They only took things that were worth money. Did you ever think about just moving on? I, I tried to, but then they sued me. That day we saw our daughter for the very last time, that day. My husband wanted to be present that day when our daughter was cremated, which she had to be because she was there for so long before being discovered. We did not come to collect our daughter's things that day. We came to bring our daughter home. Then why didn't we call did not me? think that we would have to. First off, why didn't law call student, me? we didn't sue you. We took him to court to you, have you them demand that he give us you, things. You filed a lawsuit. But we did not take anything that day of any what is value because there wasn't anything. Yeah, yes, and we did. We filed a probate is exactly what we did. Was there a, we claim, called the there probate. Was a claim and delivery there's action? A claim, there's a claim and a delivery action that's because a, that's when a in, in the process of filing small claims of state, you attached the material list. That is their process. What is we on filed that the letter of the law. You put my nightstand, you put my coffee tables, you literally How put on your... How is that important? We want our daughter's Then why clothes. would you sue for it? Why then why would you sue for I messaged, I messaged you. Her clothes, I messaged you guys. After you okay, how come you guys didn't accept my offer when I Why told you so that they were outside? You could come get them. I oh, put them back up and protected was them afterwards. 70 days later. I, I understand that you guys came you on this show to paint friend. me in the worst light. I understand that your goal here was not to get to. anything from this show, was not to seek any help. Your goal here was to continue your vendetta against me. But I'm not going to sit here and let the, the facts let be taken out of context. You, don't and tell me what here, my goal is. You don't know what my and, goal well, is. And I, but I do know the facts. And the facts are that I have extended an offer to give you guys right. Samantha's belongings repeatedly right. and every time you guys have denied it instead of accepting my offer the first time you guys filed a lawsuit against me you know I asked you if there was anything you would do different and your, your lack of insight about that is um, is is disturbing you, you, you asked me one thing I would do different. I didn't over. ask you one thing. I said, is there anything? Let's not be uh, blind to, to what's going on right now. This is another example of Dan and Katie taking their grief out on me. If you were in a position, if you were in a position where someone wrote your law school, where they were defaming you on social media, where they were suing you in court, and now, when they're riding into a national television show for the purpose of smearing you, how would you respond? My position is that you're not responsible 
for her death. We're responsible for Samantha's death, but that's different than them smearing uh, my reputation. Okay. All right. Fine. We're going to take a break. I'm going to say goodbye to Jonathan, and I'm going to speak to Katie and Dan about what they have to do as parents to accommodate to the loss that they've had here. And uh, I'm sorry for your loss as well, and I hope that you make the adjustments necessary there as well. We'll be right back. If I could just be him for a minute and you'd ask me that question, what I would want him to say is, oh my God, I would have started from minute one, second one. I would have been more mature. I would have been less control. I would have supported her in every way. Yes, I would have done some things different. I would have made certain that she found happiness. And if it was with me, fine. If it was without me, fine. But I would have done everything differently for her to be alive today. We go, we go through a lot where people don't get it. And thank you for getting it for a second. When he sits there and says, why am I why are we here that we have an agenda? Wait, yes, I have one agenda. When I walked away from the casket, the only thing that I knew is there was anything that I could do to get out there and somebody could recognize this in a relationship and it stops one other father, one father, from not having to feel this and go through this. That's why I'm here. I have no interest in anything else. The only thing interest I have is to be able to look at her smile again, and I can't. I feel like you and I have been talking dad to dad here, because I'm a father, and I, you'd have to take you're, me in the dump, something happened to one of my children. I, I, I get it. I have two other sons. I have three grandkids. I have a wife. But I understand how close you can get to that dump. Here's the thing I, I want to say to you. Everybody grieves in a different way, and you two are entitled to grieve at your own pace in the way that you want to. If you're someone that's thinking about suicide, if you're worried about a friend or a loved one and you would like emotional support, please call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit the suicidepreventionlifeline.org. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. close. We shared everything from dreams about 
what the future held to the simplest of little things as an ice cream cone. Samantha was beautiful. She walked with self-confidence. She was always laughing. She was, um, we, we would sing and dance throughout the house. She made it her business to make everybody smile. There's not enough words any mother can say about their daughter.